Welcome. I'm going to show you how quirky this counterflex super is with some images. It's going to be fun. So let's get started. If you like to learn and be inspired, join me on a quest of creativity. Explore film, alternative processes and digital. Please subscribe and hit that notification button to get the latest videos every week. Today I have the Zeiss Icon Counterflex. Now the model I have is the Super and it's got a 35mm lens adapter in front of the camera. Now to change the lens adapter you push in this little metal tab here and you just turn the lens. You'll see it's very simple and it, the lens will come off quite easily. Now normally you have the 50mm lens in front which is kind of just a small piece of glass actually. Now, to put it back on, there's a little red dot on the lens and then you match with the camera's body and it'll go back in quite easily. Now let's talk about the aperture, because this is a bit strange in this camera. Now, the small little wheel here, you turn to change the aperture. As you notice, the aperture will change on the actual lens itself as you turn the wheel. Quite unusual. Also, when you change the shutter speed, it's linked to the aperture by those two little black little grips. See? See the way the aperture changes there when you change the shutter speed. And then you can readjust the aperture, of course, again with the small wheel. It also goes in two directions as well. When you have chosen your time, you can readjust your aperture quite easily. Now, if you want the light meter to work correctly, you need to set inside this little wheel the ASA or the ISO or the DIN in this case. So for 400 ASA, you would set it to 27. Now I've set mine to 24 because of my lens adapter because it's about half a stop and I want to overexpose a little bit. But that's also why we have this 2X and 4X on this little wheel as well if you notice. You simply just push the inner wheel in to change it. Now the other quirky thing about this is the focusing. It's got these two metal grips on the side of the lens. Very similar to changing the shutter speed on an OM-1 camera. I kind of like it. It's unusual. It's not a normal way to change the focus on a camera, but it works well once you get used to it. So just also a little bit about that light meter. The light meter is also shown up here. So you have the light meter, of course, inside the camera in here when you look inside. But you also got it up here, which is kind of nice when you're, you know, out and about and you're, you want to look down to see if the, if it's in focus or not in focus, <laughs> if your exposure is correct. So if I'm changing the aperture here, you can see, so I'm getting my camera ready for a shot. And I go, okay, yeah, now my, ex now my exposure is going to be correct um, because I've already set my shutter speed. So I'm just going to use my aperture. Yeah, it's it's a nice way to just take a shot, but you may not be aware of your aperture. So let's talk about these front dials here. This one here just keeps an eye on where you are in your film. And actually, just turn the inner ring here if you want to change that. So I have about three or four shots done on this reel, so I'm just going to set it there, and that'll move around as you take shots. Over here, you've also got, I don't know if you can see that, but you can change it, it's just a din. It doesn't actually do anything, but you can set with your nail here, you just move that around and you can change the din and mine says 27. Of course, if you flip this out, that's sure to rewind your film. If you want to rewind your film, flip this out 
and then underneath the camera let me get that right here you need to lift this guy up and turn it, it says or here okay also got a tripod mount let's just put that there there's the tripod mount mine's a little loose the self timer is also on this camera here that's how that works you have to push this I, yeah there it is that's the self timer so to do the self timer first you have to cock the shutter something really nice little tip about this camera is is that when you cock the shutter here pull it back all right it will take the shot uh, with the mirror locked up when you're using timer so it's a way of doing mirror lockup on this camera push the little thing in here this side here and then you put it this way let it go I don't know if mine is working, but that's how it works anyway. It's kind of a hidden feature because this also, this switch here doubles up as a, um, for the flash, uh, for the flash sync, whether you're using bulb or electronic flash. So nearly everything on this camera doubles up in some way, every kind of function, whether it's, you know, the, the, uh, the aperture dial here with the exposure for the light meter in here, or whether it's you know the the um, film advance lever that also keeps the numbers here so or this one over here where you have the marking for where you are in the din uh, it, you know it's there's lots of little hidden features in this camera which is kind of nice eight hundred and fifty grams the weight of this thing and it's some kind of alloy, the, the die cast. It's a die cast and the letter here is supposedly Moroccan letter. There was three models of this camera. The one, the Super that I have here is from 1959. Get your lug mounts over here as well. And I have my ever ready case. I just pull that up here. So that's, that's the ever ready case. Yeah, I have just, there's the cover as well for the ever ready. That's so they call it. Put that away. It's a lovely camera, and I really like the the 35 millimeter adapter that I have with it. It's a it says Carl Zeiss. So you need to think about that when you're shooting with that lens. That the the meter will need to compensate for that as well. A nice piece of glass, actually, and it makes the camera looks pretty cool. I think. A little bit more shooting today. So as life kind of gets back to some kind of normality here in Austria, I mean, the, of course, there is the concerns of a second wave, and but for now, the weather is wonderful, and people are out and socializing. And again, I'm meeting my friends. We went to the capital city. We cycled around. Um, people are out on their skateboards in this image here. Next, an image of the hydroelectric dam that you can easily cycle to along the Donau Insel and cycle across this dam. And at the end of the day, it's kind of a nice place to end up and to see the view from both sides. I was more interested in the structure of the dam and tried to kind of do something conceptual, I suppose. The next image is of a rusty door that I found on my way to the dam. And I really like this image. The textures are lovely. The coloring is lovely. The detail that the film has rendered here uh, is fantastic. Whether it's the lens and the film together, I don't know. It's really good. I'm happy with the, with the results. I'm really pleased with it. I took two images and it gives me faith that this camera and this film combination work pretty well. And that's a good thing with a camera that you you feel that the it's working for you you're getting what you have in your mind's eye um, if you find that situation stick with that camera work with that camera or that film another image from the dono or the danube as it's called in english and i like this kind of uh, image of just the piece of the boat and i like the form and shape i actually think it would probably be better in black and white
white. So let's on to the next image. And this is going to be one of my favorite images of the series that I took. And I kind of took it on the way going back from the Castagna Alley with while cycling, just kind of, you know, look down at my camera and says, okay, you know, the range focusing, okay, aperture looks about right. And I really like it because it shows the how the sun the how the sun has a nice starburst effect, and that's kind of cool actually for this old camera. Didn't expect that, and so pleased with the results. One thing I got to say about these old cameras, they still have plenty of life in them. I really like the film advance on the Counterflex. It really brings you into part of the process that you're you know pulling the next frame in you're pulling the film across and it really feels like you're involved in the process i prefer the film advance on this camera to the om1 the om1 is kind of has a plastic lever this one has a full on metal one that, you, that seems to be unbreakable and it's going to last for the next 50 years if not 100 years and that's how this camera feels it feels solid chunky uh, like a Tonka truck to be honest I really enjoy this camera and it's proving to bring good results especially with this uh, Carl Zeiss adapter the 35 millimeter I would of course love even wider like 24 or crazy 21 but 35 is still good it's still wonderful it's like the on the digital side the X100 and I like the X100 for doing city trips it's very practical um, I mean it's very pocketable but it's 35 millimeter is kind of it really works very well for, for city kind of stuff when things are closer so finally the last image or is it the last image the second last image and I actually took this on the spur of the moment rushing across the city to, to meet people for dinner and I stopped at the traffic lights put took the camera out and or was in the basket of the bike set it up uh, set up by exposure my focusing and snap the shot I'm really pleased with the results of this too the light the detail uh, is right on so again the camera has performed and the last one on the series is just kind of an architectural shot that I that I took while while cycling along the Dona Insel Thank you for watching and if you've enjoyed this video or if you have any questions please leave them down below and um, if you haven't already subscribed or if you have subscribed thank you for subscribing and thank you for watching this video it's you guys that encourage me to make more videos and to bring you more film adventures or alternative photography or whatever i'm doing in photography so if you like this video give me a thumbs up if you don't of course you can give me a thumbs down so see you on the next one. If you haven't already subscribed, please hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to hit the little notification bell and hope to see you on the next video. Goodbye.